Beirut in the 1800s was within its defensive walls. This Ottoman era map from 1857 shows its extents back then. We can see how Beirut was formed by gathered and adjacent houses in a narrow land with 750 meters long and 370 meters width, surrounded from its four sides by defense walls. Several habitation types starting from the peasant or farmer house to the Ewan house, the arcade house, the Tuscan house, and the central court houses were found. The land use outside the walls was agriculture. It was largely an agricultural land use that had good influence in the production of silk that began in the 17th century in these garden fields. In 1860, following the Mount Lebanon Civil War, the defensive walls were demolished, which led later on to the evolution of the Ewan House and expansion of the city beyond its prior walls. The Ewan House consisted mainly of three rooms, with timber beam ceiling structure, covered with a layer of natural clay. It also had a large front yard and always faced north. According to Sanawi 1981, due to political changes in 1860s, an emerging merchant class in Beirut imported new building materials and technology from Europe, in return exporting the silk from Beirut. The adopting of imported materials were from different sources, wrought iron eye beams and roof tiles from France. Mechanically cut timber from Romania, cast iron balustrades and hardware from England, marble tiles and slabs from Italy. In the early 1860s, the new Beruti house with its new architectural topology was born. The bourgeoisie class of Beirut adopted the Ewan traditional house, they added a triple arcade and used the imported material to add a symmetrical three extra rooms. They finally replaced the traditional roof by an additional floor and created a pitched roof. Locally, stones were delivered from quarry sites around Beirut, such as Mar Elias, Ashrafi, and Masait Bequeries. Stone quarrying was the multi stage process by which rock was extracted from the ground in Ashrafi and Masait Bequeries. Rocks were crushed to produce aggregate, which is then screened into cut stones required for immediate use or for further processing. The hammer-faced or hammer-dressed procedures used in querying and dressing the stone is done with the scabbling or spalling hammer, thus creating squared stones for the coins or the face of a wall. Stones are then transferred to the site and carried by a horse holding a four-wheeled wagon during the day. The Kaki and Rifai house was built during the 1860s. It now stands as one of the earliest Baruti houses in the city. The historic buildings in Beirut are a unique example of traditional bourgeoisie architecture in the 19th and early 20th century. Nevertheless, they have been subjected to lack of maintenance and repair, which led to processes of degradation with time, compromising their use and the purpose for which they were built. In this way, a very important Beirut heritage is in risk, and the most important source of information of ancient construction systems is in consequence disappearing. The Kaka House is a quite imposing load-bearing structure, built on sandstone masonry blocks of different level foundation, under an inclined land. Vaults on the ground floor were constructed using wooden beams framing. The vaulting procedure required rotational symmetry, depending on whether it was a real or blind arcade. The house consisted of two floors, a ground, a first, and a red tiled hip roof, with a space around 285 square meters each. Making it a small surviving house in Beirut. Timber floors are constructed by placing floor wooden girders that have a cross section of about 17 by 9 centimeters. The floor girders are then put in a row that consists of single layers which are carried on a large span machine cut beams, having a cross section of around 25 by 25 centimeters linked to the walls. Construction work using regular shaped cut stones is characterized by the interchangeability of the stones and the use of stones that are specifically cut to the size and hewn to fit the place. 
This kind of wall has good benefits on the scaffolding. It reduces the need for large number of stones to be stored on the scaffolding. As a result, the scaffolding can be simpler and lighter, for they are not loaded by the great weight of the stones. The supporting beams of the scaffolding were blocked into the rising wall, and the walkways were positioned on the horizontal beams, fixing out from the wall. The master builder was assisted by helpers, and the building material were carried up by an unskilled workforce by lifting loads using a sling chain and a lifting tongue. The second floor was usually lighter and was constructed using wooden beams and girders and a layer of wooden lath underneath that was later used to apply the ceiling finishing on. In Baruti houses, 30 degrees to 35 degrees slope was adopted for the pitch, having a rise of one-fourth the span. It was also known as the square pitch. This structure was constructed by using two types of trusses, the king post and the queen post trusses. These trusses helped reduce the compression on external walls while liberating internal partitions. Kaka House is now considered an iconic and a living proof of the history of the old city of Beirut. Farah's House. Named after the most famous singer in Lebanon. And Lebanon's ambassador to the world. An icon who raised Lebanon's flag high, regionally and internationally, is an old Beruti house that dates back to the early 19th century during the Ottoman rule. It was built on a load-bearing structure that consisted of three floors with their annex, a ground floor, and a first floor, both with 220 square meters area. The first floor was covered with a red-tiled hip roof, and the second having a 77 square meters area. Covered with a small red tiled hip roof, making it different from the other surviving houses in Beirut. It also had an outer stone staircase located to the north of the house, leading from the courtyard. El Sabra House was one of those stately houses which were built in late 19th century on the hill slopes outside the old city of Beirut. This house is distinguished from the other houses dated to same period by its red tiled steeple valley hip roof. It once dominated the urban landscape of the newly developing quarters. Its main facade has a wall surface extending into a gable without break. The house was built in sandstone masonry blocks and consisted of a basement and two floors, a ground and a first, topped by the red-tiled steeple hip valley roof, with space around 285 square meters each. The ceiling was almost 4.5 meters high and had I-beam girders carried on the sandstone walls. Wooden joists connected the I-beams, forming a composite slab structure. The Charles Howry Mansion was built during the late 19th century on the hill slopes outside the old city of Beirut. The mansion is set back from Patrakia Street by a garden which is the main entrance of the mansion. An iron gate and a decorated staircase are located alongside the street. Typologically, this mansion can be classified with the type of late 19th century Beruti upper bourgeoisie mansions. 
Its load-bearing structure consisted of a basement and two stories above. Each floor is surrounded by a gallery which runs along the outer walls. Unlike most Baruti houses, the triple-arched windows were hidden by an elevated open gallery with pointed arches on marble columns. The ceiling is almost 5 meters high and has iron girders with stone fills between most rooms and short wooden beams and fillings in secondary rooms. The ceilings were carried by long eye-shaped iron girders supported at the stone walls. Between the iron girders ran vaulted stones covers that spanned the outer space of the arched gallery and used as a balcony. The spaces above the girders are screened with substrates. Rubble stones are filled between them in a vaulted shape to form a new kind of flooring.